What's up, folks? This is your boy, Darko. Welcome to another edition of Kindles and Kicks. This is my February recap slash March TBR. So, February started off great. I got some a couple of good books in, celebrated a birthday, but the last week of February was some straight trash. In the words of one of my favorite booktubers, DJ Rees, man, life be lifing. Life is just lifing all over the place because not only did I have to switch my work schedule around, which of course affected my ability to read as frequently as I'd like to, but I caught COVID. Still have some lingering symptoms. After four plus years of dodging it, I caught COVID and I caught it at work. There was a meeting. Everyone was forced into this tiny conference room at the last minute. And a few days later, I'm sick, but I'm getting better. And I want to get some, some stuff out there, some things off my chest. There are a couple of videos that I wanted to post in February that will need to be moved to March. One was my favorite black characters in science fiction and fantasy. And another was a booktube tag that I was tagged in that I wanted to answer and did not get a chance to because of COVID. So look for that in the com coming weeks. Okay. First book I read in February was Wall of Storms by Kenley Yu. Man, it's always difficult to review books and series outside of the first book because I really don't want to spoil anything. I mean, Wall of Storms. So one of the main characters from Grace of Kings is in charge now. He's the boss. Unfortunately, he has to face some of the same challenges and circumstances of the leader who he usurped. So he came in, caused the uprising, caused this big rebellion. The previous emperor got dethroned. My man, the main character from Grace of Kings took his place and now he has to face an uprising and potential war and a takeover by this crazy, crazy race of people from beyond the wall of storms, which is this giant wall. And it's like an amalgam of cyclones and tornadoes and lightning and hurricanes just all jumbled together to and you have to know exactly when to try to enter it in order to make it through that wall of storms. And it's a whole thing. Just read the Dandelion Dynasty. If you have not read or are not reading the Dandelion Dynasty, one question, what are you doing with your life? You really need to ask yourself, what am I doing with my life that I am not reading Dandelion Dynasty? Because it is one of the best series I've ever read so far. And I will be continuing on and have started with The Veiled Throne, which is the penultimate book in the four book series. So look forward to more on that. The next thing I read was Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, which if anyone has seen my review, changed my life. And it's not even about the story. It's not about the, the plot. It's about the questions this book will have you asking yourself just as a human being. Um, I read it quite accidentally as a buddy read with my, my little homie Britton, AKA some Oki dude. And that really enhanced the experience overall, overall like us texting back and forth, our thoughts and our initial reactions while reading it. I mean, it was just an overall great experience. And that's a book I cannot recommend enough. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Josh from Red Furry Books. Uh, Joanna, like so many people who like promoted that, that review, like the love I received was, was so unexpected, but like so appreciated. So just thank you all for like the huge shout outs and the promotion of that review. 
And if you haven't watched it, please do. The next book I read was Paranesi by Susanna Clark. And I got to give a shout out to um, Ben at Books with Bengus because while I had heard about this book before, he is the booktuber that persuaded me to read it. And I am thoroughly happy that I did. The setting, the mystery behind what's going on, like the pros. Like most booktubers, Paranesi, I agree, is a book you need to go into knowing as little as little as possible. It's just like it's it's everything. It's it's they I guess most people label it as fantasy, but it's it's a lot more than that. Especially for such a such a short book. It is overall a phenomenal read and I actually wouldn't mind rereading it soon. So yeah, check out Paranissi by Susanna Clark and shout out to Ben for that book. And also backing up because <clears throat> I want to try to give props to booktubers who put me on to books and series. So yeah, backing up to um, Kenley Yu, Danny Lion Dynasty. I got to give a shout out to my boy Matt at Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews because he is the person who put me on to the Dandelion Dynasty. And outside of that, what really made me want to read it was when he said the book could potentially dethrone Malazan Book of the Fallen as his favorite series. Now, I don't know how many of you know Malazan fans, but they don't play about their Malazan. They do not play about the M-B-O-T-F, okay? So if someone who is a huge fan like Matt or Dr. Philip Chase, some people who are very well known for their love of Malaz and Book of the Fallen tells you that they're reading a book or series that could possibly dethrone that series as their number one, oh yeah. Got to check it out. Got to. So yeah, again, another plug for Danny Lion Dynasty and shout out to Matt for putting me onto that series because it is absolutely amazing. All right. The last book I read was Binti by Nindi Okorafor. I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly. And this is a series I kind of read on a whim because I wanted something kind of quick and easy. It's a young adult novel about a young African girl who's accepted into a university that usually does not accept people like her or from her tribe. And it's about, you know, the issues that you encounter as being when you're different and you're navigating a new space and you're the outsider or you're the foreigner and how sometimes that can be a detriment, but also a benefit because you see things or process things differently. In any case, it's, uh, if I could describe it, it's, I think it's cute. It's a young adult. I think it's perfect for the young reader. Um, when I read it, I, it reminded me a lot of my mother because she always likes to buy books for presents, especially for young people, especially for kids and teenagers. And she always does her best to buy a book where the central character is representative of the person who she's gifting that book to. So, for example... If she was buying a gift for a young black girl, she would probably buy something like this. Like, and, and I think it would be perfect in that scenario because I know when I was a child, how great I enjoyed reading or watching something and seeing myself in it. And, <clears throat> but it's an, it's a, it's a great story. Um, I think anybody could get something out of it by reading it, but you know, it's nothing spectacular, but you know, yeah, I enjoyed it for what it was. That was my February, you know, four books on to my March TBR. So there are three books confirmed, actually four books, I'm sorry, four books confirmed 
for March that I do really want to read. And I'm currently in the process now of two of them. Um, one of them is The Veiled Throne, which is the third book in the Dandelion Dynasty, the penultimate novel. And already it's awesome. I'm only like 200 pages in and already love it even more than Wall of Storms. I mean, the books just get better and better. The second, which I was supposed to finish in February, but did not because of COVID, is A Song of Our Bone by Guy Gabriel K. I am so upset that I have not read Guy Gabriel K before. Not since I discovered Robin Robin Hobb have I been so impressed by an author's prose. And this story it is beautiful. It's it's gorgeous. It's romantic. It's historical. It's it's just so much in these, you know, five 150 plus pages, something around that. I'm just enjoying it so much. There's a particular scene in here that I I read yesterday and it just really evoked some serious emotions. It reminded me of a scene, and I don't want to ruin anything, but there's a scene in the Realm of the Elderlings toward the end of the series and the last trilogy. I cannot rem remember which book, but my boy Fitz, after going through all the BS he has went through in his life, is finally encouraged to stand up and and take a bow and be recognized for all he has done, all he has contributed, and all he represents. And there's a very similar scene in A Song of Our Bone where the main character is invited to do the same. And I just love stories like that when the underdog after being put through the ringer, finally, either they recognize it within themselves, how special they are, or somebody else recognizes it and makes them stand up and claim, claim their recognition and claim their, their royalty or their throne or whatever. And those kind of scenarios and stories just really resonate with me. And there's a scene in a song of our bone that's, that fits that, that motif, <clears throat> excuse me, that fits that motif. And, and it just, it really just brought like misty, misty eyes. I'm not saying I bawled crying, but it gave me misty eyes. The next book that's on my TBR for March is A Spear Cuts Through Water by Simon Jimenez. Um, Evie from She Was Only Evie and Dan from Black and Blue Collar Reader. Both of them have ranted and raved about this book. And so I have got to read it. I don't even know what it's about, really. I just know it has like magic and gods and very long chapters. But I heard Simon Jimenez is an excellent writer. And that's all you have to tell me. Like prose, I am a prose snob. And if you tell me the prose is remarkable or impeccable or whatever, I will definitely read it. But when you add that the story is great as well and it's unique and it's different, it makes me intrigued even more. So that is going to be um, another read for mine in March. Now, also in March, I will be restarting Malazan Book of the Fallen. I'm just gonna make a whole separate video for that. Cause that's like, that's like a celebration for me because a couple of months ago, I did a coin flip deciding between Malazan and Will of Time. Those two series have been on my TBR for over a decade, like seriously over a decade. And I have tried both more than once and have not succeeded in completing them. But I have a new strategy now. I'm gonna take breaks. When I feel like I'm getting fatigued, take a break, step back, read some quick, fast, and fun, and then come back to it. So yeah, I will be starting Gardens of the Moon sometime in March. I will make a separate video to say when, and also hopefully, you know, keep people updated and on my Malazan progress as I make my way through each of the books. 
All right, so that's my February wrap up and March CBR. I hope that March is a better reading month than February. Um, you know, hopefully I'm 100% better in the next week or so and I can get back to posting videos on a more regular schedule. I'll, I, I always try to get out at least one a week. Uh, that usually fits in my schedule and it's, uh, it's very manageable. So hopefully we can get back to that. Thank you for watching. This is Darko, Kindles and Kicks. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Peace. Hello.